wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. Steve here, coming to you from Conway, Arkansas. I'm in the middle of a new semester. Things have got hectic real quick. But I'm taking the time to make this episode for you today, uh, because it's the Sunday Stoic Dagnabbit, and I shall release an episode every Sunday, come hell or high water. <laughs> uh, this week, I'm going to talk a little bit about writing like a Stoic, and we're going to hear from Seneca, and, and I, I've taken bits of this reading from Seneca, so it's not the entire thing, but... Um, Seneca in this reading is talking about how important it is to not just read, but to then write. We have to take what we've learned and make it into our own words and then write it down. And this is something we often don't do. Maybe we journal a little bit and write like a Marcus Aurelius kind of short, pithy statement here or there. But Seneca is really uh, trying to get us to write a little more, I think, to uh, reflect on what we've read, make it our own and get it not just into our memory, but into our character. So he's going to talk about how we should be like bees. Uh, Bees fly around and gather up nectar and turn it into honey. We should gather around all the wisdom of the ages, find the best bits, and then form it together into our own internal character. We should build our own philosophy. Moral Letters to Lucilius by Seneca number 84 We ought not to confine ourselves either to writing or to reading. The one, continuous writing, will cast a gloom over our strength and exhaust it. The other will make our strength flabby and watery. It is better to have recourse to them alternately, and to blend one with the other, so that the fruits of one's reading may be reduced to concrete form by the pen. Also, I say, we ought to copy these bees and sift whatever we have gathered from a varied course of reading. For such things are better preserved, if they are kept separate, than by applying the supervising care with which our nature has endowed us. In other words, our natural gifts. We should so blend those several flavors into one delicious compound that even though it betrays its origin, yet it nevertheless is clearly a different thing from whence it came. Even if there shall appear in you a likeness to him who by reason of your admiration has left a deep impress upon you, I would have you resemble him as a child resembles his father, and not as a picture resembles its original, for a picture is a lifeless thing. I would have my mind of such quality as this. It should be equipped with many arts, many precepts, and patterns of conduct taken from many epochs of history, but all should blend harmoniously into one. How, you ask, can this be accomplished? By constant effort, and by doing nothing without the approval of reason. And if you are willing to hear her voice, she will say to you, Abandon those pursuits which have herefore have caused you to run hither and thither, Abandon riches, which are either a danger or a burden to the possessor. Abandon the pleasures of the body and of the mind. They only soften and weaken you. So we need to read widely and gather this information from all sources, religious texts, philosophy from the ages, history, uh, biology, etc., and weave it together in our own writing to build up our own character. Uh, through writing and reflection. And we could do this in the Marcus Aurelius fashion by kind of almost like bullet points of uh, of ideas or the uh, more robust, perhaps, Seneca method of long essays, depending on your style. And what I've decided to do to try this, um, I've always wanted to write a little bit of something stoic, but there are so many books out there and I find it intimidating to think about writing a book. But I thought, what if I write a letter or two like Seneca did? And then I thought, okay, he wrote to Lucilius. Who should I write to? And I decided, well, what if I write to 
kind of the future generation of the family. I'll write to my niece. She's only about uh, approaching a year old now. Uh, she'll be uh, a year old in November. So I'll write a letter to her uh, using wisdom of Stoic philosophy to to talk about kind of what Seneca talks about earlier in the letter that we should use our own strengths, our own uh, the strengths that nature gave us uh, to live. A good life. And uh, you're going to hear my kid in the background. He's getting his bath as per usual. Uh, my life is chaotic at best. And uh, studio alone time is not something the Sunday Stoic has at this time. Anyway, so what I've done is I've crafted a letter to her, uh, something she wouldn't understand yet, but something to explain to her Stoicism, some of the principles of Stoicism. And it might be something I continue, and I might write more to her in the future. So without further ado, uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, as opposed to letters from a Stoic, we'll just call it letters from Uncle Steve. Letter 1. The Universe and You. My dearest Josephine, as I write this, the last time I saw you, we were on vacation. You will not remember this, as you were only eight months old or so at the time. But you reached out for me to hold you the moment I stepped out of the car, and you remained enamored with me the entire week. I have always been able to get a smile from a child. I think it's because my face is already a caricature of a normal person, and by adding goofy grins and silly voices, this usually captures the attention of little ones such as yourself. But when it was my own sweet niece reaching out for me, it was something very special indeed, something that I will always remember. I hope that as you grow, you will retain some of that wide-eyed happiness and sweetness that I saw this last summer. But as you get older, you will begin to learn many new things. You will be told that you should believe some things on faith, take others as fact, and ignore yet other things. Some of this advice will be contradictory, inconsistent, or unbelievable. There is one thing that I would like you to remember that may help you to navigate through the confusion. You are a piece of this magnificent universe. And in my mind, this makes you magnificent. And if you choose to be a good and helpful, helpful person, then your magnificence will only shine brighter. The universe is everything that we know, all the matter and energy, all the planets, stars, and space between them, all the people who have ever lived, all their ideas, music, art, and dreams are all part of this universe. You are one of its newest members. But though you yourself are new, you are made of ancient parts connecting you to all of humanity and the universe as a whole. This connection makes all of life your distant relatives and all humanity your cousins. Have a look at these cousins of ours. See what they can do. They make music, art, literature. They teach, build, farm, and do millions of other things. These abilities are part of the nature of being human. But no single person can do every one of these things, Part of growing up and growing wise is to figure out what your own nature is, where your skills and interests are. Work on these. There will be some things that you do not first think you'll be good at or interested in, but do not hesitate to explore. But also, do not waste much time devoting yourself to things once you have found them to be outside of your nature. A star a planet and a moon are all part of the universe, but they each have their own unique part to play. So does a banker, musician, farmer, and teacher. Spend some time figuring out how you can best be a part of human society in a way that allows you to use your own skills and talents. If you follow this internal nature, you will shine just as bright as any star. This may take some time and trial and error, but it is worth the effort. With love from afar, your Uncle Steve. And before we go, don't forget, uh, on the 21st, there is the College of Stoic Philosophers Conference online with Kai Whiting and others. I will put a link in the show description. I still have a couple of Stoic coins left for sale on Etsy. You can check those out. Go to Etsy and pop, uh, type in Stoic coin. There's a few of those remaining. I've sent a lot of them to the UK and Australia and, uh, and a few to the US, uh, but they've been going, uh, out of country quite a bit, which is interesting. So, uh, that's what I ask you to do and feel free to write into the show. Let me know what you want to hear about. 
And uh, remember, you can become a patron by going to www.patreon.com slash Sunday Stoic and help support the show and keep it running. Thanks for all your help and thanks for listening. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, Carpe Diem. Thank you.